Hello and welcome to our video on coupled oscillators. Before we get into the math, we figured we could give you a little bit of context and some help visualising our problem. If you look carefully, you'll find examples of the same principles we're about to cover in everyday life, just in your own body, for example, from the pacemaker cells in the heart to the insulin secreting cells in the pancreas and even to the neural networks in the brain and spinal cord. There are two types of oscillation movements that we're going to touch on in this video. The first is both masses moving out of phase and the second is in phase, therefore both in the same direction. First, consider two equal masses were connected by a spring of constant k in the middle and were then connected to a wall either side by a spring of constant s. The spring constant of a spring is defined as the force needed to stretch or compress the spring divided by the distance it moves. Now we know the masses will be moving, so let the displacement of the masses be phi. So at t equals 0, which is in equilibrium, phi 1 and phi 2 both equal 0. On the left-hand side of the equation, we will need to place the driving force. We derive this from Newton's second law, f equals ma, but where a is denoted by the double, double differential of the displacement with respect to time. On the right-hand side of the equation, we will need to place the restoring force, the force that opposes motion. Let us first take mass 1 on the left. The restoring force given by the left-hand side spring will be minus s phi 1. The negative denotes that it's in the opposite direction to displacement. The restoring force given by the right-hand side spring will be minus k phi 1 minus phi 2. The difference in displacement here is because the restoring force exerted by the middle spring is not only dependent on the displacement of mass 1, but also it is combined with movement of mass 2. Remember, because the masses are coupled, there is no scenario where they move independently. They are intrinsically linked together. So for mass 1, the combined equation of left-hand side and right-hand side will be equation 1. It's the same for mass 2, except that the notation changes. Therefore, we get equation 2. There are now the steps to find the solution. Step 1, we add the two initial equations 1 and 2 together. We consider the left-hand side first. Inside the double differential, we have the added displacements. On the right-hand side, we have added all the components together, and we realise that after expanding the brackets, the middle spring components in green all cancel out, and leave us with only the edge spring components in orange. Step 2, we subtract the two equations from each other. On the left-hand side, we have subtracted the displacement components inside the double differential, on the right-hand side, we see the minus has flipped the sign on the latter half of the equation, and therefore, they can be simplified as shown. From equation 3 and 4, we can see phi 1 and mi minus phi 2 and phi 1 plus phi 2 are modelling subharmonic motion, so we can replace them with qa and qb to make our equations simpler, giving us these equations. Let us deal with equation 5 and 6. If we say QA and QB can be standard solutions for simple harmonic motion, then if we add our Qs together and subtract them, we get two other expressions for the displacement that we can use in our solution. We also get that since omega is the square root, the spring constant over the mass, omega A and B are as follows. When we hold both masses and push them in the same direction with the same displacement of magnitude c, then at t equals 0, the initial velocity is 0. It follows that qa is 2c, which is the amplitude a, and qb is the amplitude b, which is 0. In this case, the system moves back and forth with the two oscillators in phase, giving us the resulting Python-generated graph if we were to track the displacement of the masses in different colours. When we move the less mass, left mass with displacement c to the left and keep the other mass at equilibrium, then at t equals 0, the initial velocity is still 0. But here, qa equals c and qb equals c. Using our displacement equations, and this time modelling our qa and qb on cosine waves with angular velocity omega and amplitude c, we get a concise displacement equation. In this case, each of the masses describe a motion given above, with phi 1 and phi 2 out of phase, 
resulting in the recognisable beats wave we see here. So that's it for our derivations and demos. We hope that was useful, and if you want any more information, feel free to check out our sources.